Folks, thanks for checking out Reigniting Liberty. I'm Deneen Borelli and Dr. Tom Borelli is in the house bringing you the truth in black and white. So folks, we have a great guest joining us today. Her name is Leora Levy, and she is the Republican candidate for Senate in Connecticut running against Democrat incumbent Dick Blumenthal. Leora, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be here. We're happy to have you. So we want to get people to know who you are, especially because of the name recognition versus Blumenthal, for example. If you could just give our listeners and viewers a little bit about your background. Yes, well, I am not a career politician. I am a career American. I am running because I've never been so concerned about our country. When I see the the government interfering between parents and their children, what, uh, indoctrinating our children in the schools, what, when you consider the crushing inflation that all of us are experiencing that is making life unaffordable for Connecticut families. I want every American, especially every American child, to be able to live their American dream. And, and today, with the expensive, the, the very high prices of food and gasoline and everything else that, that people have to buy, I, I know that it makes that dream very hard to attain. So I'm running to make life more affordable. I'm running to close the border. We have an invasion at our border. It, this is not immigration. I am a legal immigrant to this country. I was born in Havana, Cuba. I came here as a child with my family escaping communism. I have lived an American dream. I watched my father first get a job and then eventually start his own business. I was his payroll clerk in the summer. That's how I made money for college. Fast forward, I graduated from a great university because I, I studied hard and worked hard. I then was one of the first women international commodity traders on Wall Street. And because of that, what I did on Wall Street, uh, trading copper concentrates out of Chile, I was nominated by President Trump in 2019 to be the U.S. ambassador to Chile. And um, so I have lived an American dream. Now I am running for U.S. Senate and I am running to make sure everyone else has that opportunity. So, Leora, you're clearly a, a prime example of American exceptionalism, and especially as you know, a legal immigrant from communist Cuba. And what strikes me most about people who are just jumping into the arena is their motivation. So clearly you've worked hard. You and your husband have accumulated a fair amount of wealth. You have a great family. Again, why would you jump into the political arena when you could really just kick up your feet and enjoy life? You're right, because that's what all my friends are doing at this <laughs> stage in, in life. But I cannot enjoy life watching what is happening to our country. Our country is worth fighting for. That is what drives me. That is why I'm running. Well, that's great. And your story really is admirable. And uh, we thank you for jumping into the craziness because it is crazy. There's just so much going on in politics. And when you look at it locally, what's going on in Connecticut, high cost of living, you mentioned gas and grocery prices, uh, uh, the companies that are fleeing Connecticut because of high taxes. And that means less jobs yes. for the state. That means less tax revenue. Talk to us about that a little bit. Well, frankly, my opponent, Dick Blumenthal, what is responsible for chasing more jobs out of our state as attorney general. When he was our attorney general, he spent his time suing the companies who were he located here in Connecticut. So, so so much so that they left the state and took their jobs with them. We ha we are the only state, Connecticut is the only state that has not recovered the jobs lost in, in the 2008 recession when Dick Blumenthal was attorney general and suing companies. 
we must make Connecticut a business friendly environment. It's not only the high taxes, it's the, the very oppressive regulatory regime here that is chasing business out of the state. When I am the senator from Connecticut, I will do everything I can on the federal level to bring jobs back to Connecticut. We have very important industries here, like the defense contractors. We have a brain trust in, in our fine universities that are here. Connecticut should be thriving today, but we're not. What I'd like to do is reinvigorate a, a bill that would enable the Small Business Administration to expand the number of loans that they make. That bill has been languishing without any attention. I will resurrect it. I would like small businesses here in Connecticut who are the backbone of our economy to be able to, to start, to grow, and, and, and to expand. They must be able to operate in a financially profitable way or, or they, they won't be able to survive and their, their jobs will go, those jobs will go as well. I also would like to expand the opportunity zones. That was a great program of the last administration and we should expand it because it helped small businesses tremendously. Those are the types of, of policies that I will work on. And to the extent that there are federal regu regulations that are inhibiting businesses here in Connecticut, I will also work on reducing those. So, Lior, it's pretty clear you're a conservative Republican and you're obviously running in a state that is controlled by Democrats. So I'm just curious, with your conservative message, how is it resonating in the ground, on the ground, when you travel throughout the state? Well, I'm a very common sense conservative and the policies that I represent are common sense policies that will help make life affordable again for Connecticut families, that will support parents in their efforts to be involved with their children's education and make sure that their children are not exposed to inappropriate um, critical race theory concepts, inappropriate sexual content. Those are very destructive policies that we see happening in the public school system throughout Connecticut. I'm here to stand with parents and make sure our children are educated, not indoctrinated. Those policies are resonating everywhere I go throughout the state. People are, are coming up to me saying, I'm a Democrat, I'm an independent, but I am going to vote for you because I may be liberal, but I'm not insane. And they love, they understand what is happening and they don't like it any more than I do. Yeah, it is startling actually. And sadly, until there is an issue on your front door, uh, folks are just not paying attention to local politics, what's going on in their communities. And we're going to touch on that in a moment in regards to Project Veritas and the investigation and your press conference. But yes. regarding uh, Dick Blumenthal, who is a career politician, uh, what, what's some of the criticism uh, that you were hearing from others since you were running against him? Well, first of all, he has been in political office for over 37 years. He has overstayed his welcome. The voters of Connecticut understand that they are ready for change, for new ideas, and for, for a new set of eyes to be there for them in Washington. He is no longer in touch with the people of Connecticut. For instance, I bumped into him at a fair, the, the Brooklyn, Connecticut fair is very near the Massachusetts border. I spent four hours in traffic trying to get there. When I wow. saw him there, I we, we shook hands. I said, so Dick, did, how long did it take you to get here? And he said, oh, no time at all. I said, what are you talking about? Didn't you hit traffic? He said, oh no, no traffic. So I said, oh, what did you do, fly? He said, yes. <laughs> I mean, talk about being out of touch. That's out of touch. Wow. Yeah. And it, at least he admitted it. Maybe someone saw him. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Tom. But anyway, he is out of touch. He doesn't understand the problems of, of hardworking Connecticut families. When we go to the gas station and we see the high prices, we have to make choices. Do we fill our tank? Do we feed our children? Winter is coming. You, you know how cold it can get here. 
The price of home heating oil is much higher this year, and people are going to have a very difficult time keeping their homes warm. Uh, that is, those are the types of things he is out of touch with because he says, if you can't afford the gas prices, get an electric car. That's right. out of touch. Do you, does he realize how expensive they are? Does he realize the electricity has to be generated and how high our electric bills have gone in Connecticut? We're among the highest state in the country for, for electricity prices. This is, this is just out of touch. And so I'm glad you mentioned energy. That is something that we talk about on a regular basis. I don't know if you want to jump in there, Tom, on that as well. But this is an everyday kitchen table issue. Yes. And you are so right, Leora. Winter is coming. Yeah. And, you know, just to elaborate a little bit, what a lot of people don't realize is Connecticut, actually, New England, as you mentioned, Leora, is among the highest prices for electricity because they've gotten rid of a lot of coal plants. They're dialed down a number of nuclear plants. We're just left with natural gas and we don't have the natural gas pipelines to feed the demand in all of New England. So there's no structural infrastructure that's going to be able to allow us A, cheaper electricity, which is really important for industry and B, how are you gonna power those electric cars through electricity when we're having a hard enough time right now with affordable prices because of the lack of uh, energy infrastructure. Well, everything you just said is correct. And frankly, Blumenthal also opposed a natural gas terminal in Connecticut. Oh. I, I understand he also opposed the pipeline for Connecticut. So he has been an obstructionist. He, has, he supported every single failed policy of the Biden administration when Biden closed down the Keystone pipeline and Anwar pipeline, when when Biden uh, canceled leases for drilling in U.S. land waters and, and on U.S. land, when, when he also canceled permits for exploration in U.S. waters and on U.S. land. All of those policies were supported by Dick Blumenthal and contributed to the shortage of energy products that we are experiencing. On top of that, Putin just closed the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which by the way, he supported because he's one of five senators who has received money from the lobbyists for Nord Stream 2. He he supported first opening it and now the closure of it, which will make Europe short of gas and, and will force, will really uh, entice American producers to sell their gas in Europe instead of here if they can get a higher price. It's all market driven. So there is a shortage of all energy prices created by the Biden administration, rubber stamped by Blumenthal. Yeah, that's one of the problems that they just, Democrats are on lockstep. So we got Green New Deal Biden, Green New Deal Representative Ocasio-Cortez, and now what you're telling us, it's Green New Deal Dick Blumenthal, who, as you said, he blocked, or he doesn't support constructions of natural gas pipelines. How can we generate electricity? It's just, it's just amazing that these elected officials can vote this way and are not held accountable. And all people need to do is look at their electricity bill and see Dick Blumenthal's face. Maybe that'll help. That's right. Dick Blumenthal, I call him the face of Biden in Connecticut. And I am running to rid Connecticut of the Blumenthal blight. True. I want to bring business back. I want to bring energy production back to our country. You know, life was a lot better before Biden was inaugurated economically. We were in, in the throes of an economic recovery, which Biden and Blumenthal have turned into an economic recession. That's so true. And everyone is really feeling it for sure. Uh, so let's uh, pivot to the Project Veritas investigation of a school in Costco. Uh, it was uh, discovered, uncovered that the assistant principal, uh, Jeremy Boland, uh, made some very eyebrow raising comments in this video. If you could just give us the backdrop on that and then we'll get into what happened at your press conference, which Tom and I, we were both there and it was a huge turnout. 
Yes, it was. I, it was amazing, but it shows how concerned parents here are. And, and this was revealed just before the first day of school, frankly. Our press conference Wednesday was the day before the public schools opened on Thursday here in Greenwich. This assistant pr principal admitted on film that he discriminates in the hiring of teachers for Cost Cobb Elementary School. He will not hire anybody over 30. He will not hire anybody with conservative po political views, and he will not hire anybody who is Catholic. The, his reason for this is that all three of those groups are people who are set in their ways and not open to the progressive uh, political ideology that they are trying to instill in our children. They are trying to make them think that way in order to affect their voting patterns, their opinions for the rest of their lives. This is indoctrination. As I told you, I was born in Cuba. One of the first things Castro did when he took over was to indoctrinate the children. First, to spy on and inform on their parents. Second, to be loyal to him. He replaced himself as the father figure in their minds to be loyal to his revolution and to grow up as good little communists. That is what this principal, this assistant principal, was trying to do in the Cost Cobb Elementary School. And the, frankly, the concern is he, he can't be alone in this. He can't be. We, it, it must be investigated to see how widespread this effort is. Uh, to your knowledge, uh, what's been the Democrat response to this sort of uh, indoctrination, which is the right word to use? Did Mr. Blumenthal have any comment or response to this? No, he put out a statement um, condemning discrimination in general, but he did not say anything about the indoctrination of our children. In fact, wow. he has been complicit. Um, in Connecticut, uh, there were $1.1 billion of American Relief Plan funds uh, that were designated for mitigation of COVID in the schools. A portion of it has been used for teaching critical race theory and for training teachers to teach critical race theory in the schools. Blumenthal supported it. I sure hope you are like going to fly banners about this all day long for your campaign. What, what, where Blumenthal is and all of this with children. I mean, with this school in Costco, for example, it's pre-K through fifth grade, I believe. I mean, these are very young kids and they are trying to take the power out of the hands of the parents. Yes, they are. And as I said, they, the, the, the school is the representative of the government. If this is the government interfering between parents and children, they are our children, not the government's. So I will always stand with parents. On the campaign uh, trail, uh, Lior, are, are, how big of an issue is parental rights? And do you think that has the potential to cut across a traditional political uh, barrier, so to speak. It is a very big issue. I hear about it everywhere I go. And that is why Democrats and independents, as, as well as Republicans, are supporting my campaign and, and my effort to defeat Blumenthal. And I know you have been all over the state of yeah. Connecticut. You have a very busy schedule. Any one-on-one -on -one discussions you're able to have with people or even in, in a group setting and what are, what are the top of mind issues that are really important to them? Well, I have a lot of one-on-one -on -one discussions because uh, especially now in August and September, this is the season for all of the fairs throughout the state. And I have gone to many, many of them. And I love to speak with our voters. I love to engage with them. And yes, this, this issue of parental control and government interference, indoctrination of our children is a very big issue that I hear about. But again, I also hear about the economic 
um, issues that we discussed, inflation, the difficulty in making ends meet, and the unaffordability of life. I hear from small business owners who are having a very difficult time staying in business. And I also hear about the concern about the invasion at our border. It is coming to Connecticut. Connecticut is now a border state because Biden, supported by Blumenthal, they are flying illegal immigrants to Westchester County Airport, five miles from my house here in Greenwich, and to Tweed Airport in New Haven, and bringing in those in illegal aliens coming bring immigrants, bringing them to Connecticut. They are given everything they need to live free. And while hardworking families in Connecticut not only must foot the bill, but they have to support themselves. This is very tough on everybody. And with these illegals, we have a big fentanyl problem. I have an op-ed in today's heart, um, Connecticut Post about the fentanyl problem in Connecticut. And, uh, we and the fact that Blumenthal wants more federal money for Narcan, but he has no no uh, idea about closing the border. How about closing the border so we don't have the fentanyl problem in the first place? So these are issues that people care about. They are also very concerned about the increase of crime throughout Connecticut. It doesn't matter how bucolic the town is. Everybody is ex experiencing increased crime. Here in Greenwich, there were uh, there was a mugging on Greenwich Avenue, our main shopping street at 4.30 in the afternoon. There was an armed robbery on Greenwich Avenue in June. Also, everywhere, every day in the cities, there are people shot and killed and injured. This is a regular occurrence because here in Connecticut, the Democrats defunded the police and removed their qualified immunity. Blumenthal supported this. He's in favor of it. He supported the Black Lives Matter matter riot riots that were were very destructive and and, and injured a lot of people and and destroyed businesses. He supported that. He called it peaceful protest. You know, he is on the wrong side of this issue and, and the voters of Connecticut, the families of Connecticut know that. You know, Leora, one of the things that uh, struck me about you uh, following the Project Veritas video was the leadership that you provided. I believe that video came out uh, evening and the next day you were leading a press conference but the press conference wasn't just about Leora. No. <laughs> Leora, it appears, organized it, but you had uh, state representatives there, uh, Fiorello, uh, our, our state representative. Uh, yes. You also had state uh, other representatives there, state senators, Mr. Yes. Fazio, and Fazio. other people running. So I think that is Peter, a good sign sure. for uh, people to understand about you is the fact that it wasn't just about you, which obviously most career politicians would have done. <laughs> I'm not were, a career politician. Right, I, right, I, there's the proof, you know, right. You were able to make it a team exercise that's right. and bringing it across, uh, can, uh, hopefully across not only Greenwich, but across all of Connecticut. Well, thank you for pointing that out. I, I also wear the hat of the Republican National Committee woman for Connecticut. I have always tried to unify and expand our party. We are a big tent. I go, I uh, adhere to President Reagan's commandment or, or saying that my 80% friend is not my 20% enemy on the existential issues of our time we agree. And I was very happy and honored to include State Representative Kimberly Fiorello, State Senator Ryan Fazio, our first selectman, Fred Camillo, and our great candidate for U.S. Congress in the 4th District, Jamie Stevenson. I brought together all of the leaders from from our party, also state representative in a uh, candidate in Norwalk, Dan Moresi. It's important that the that the voters understand what we Republicans stand for, and that we, as uh, many of us, are parents. I am a mother. I raised three sons here in Connecticut, and we understand how difficult it is to raise children in this environment, we will always stand for the parents. 
Absolutely. And also uh, Peter Schur was another. Oh, Peter Schur, uh, excuse me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, Peter that's okay. Schur. And it yeah. was very important that he be there because he was a member of the Board of Education here yes. in Greenwich. And now he is running for state representative in the 151st district as well. So it was very important that he was there and that he was able to speak from his perspective as a former Board of Education represent, uh, member. So thank you yeah. for reminding me of that. I sure know. And, and it was a huge turnout. There were young kids there. Yeah. There were, I mean, and this was a last minute thing at the school. And I, it's just a sign of the things to come because there's just so much going on. But parental rights, whether it's health care, whether it's education, is monumental. And uh, we thank you for uh, organizing and, and having a successful press conference because well, there was a lot of media there as well. Go right yes, ahead. There, there was. But that is indicative of the way that I operate. I am a uniter. I have worked in our community. I, I led the public-private partnership to relocate and move and build a new animal shelter in our town. And this united people of all backgrounds because we're all committed to to improving the lot of the weakest among us, our, our stray animals and, and our lost animals. And, and I still, to this day, we, we raised so much money. It was built in 2009. And today in 2022, I still administer a fund that provides for the animals and, the, and anything the shelter needs that the town may not have in its budget. I approved two surgeries for two different animals in the shelter within the last few weeks. So those are the types of things things I'm capable of. I was also chairman of the board of the Bruce Museum and put them on the road to their capital expansion that it hopefully will be finished within the next year. And those are the things that, that I will do as senator. Those are, That's the way I operate. I will be a uniter and I find the best way to get something done and go to it. Yeah, that yeah. is it, great. It, it, it takes a leader. And obviously you, you've shown that, uh, as you just described, that over the years, it's just not a, a Johnny come lately. Hey, I want to be a senator because I'm bored. You know, one <laughs> of the things that, that strikes me, uh, I mean, Denny and I have now been in Greenwich, I guess, about seven years. We escaped the property taxes in Westchester County. But Denny and I were also members of the Tea Party. It goes back, you know, a number of years now. Too many, I might say. <laughs> But it what struck us about what's going on in Greenwich, again, it, it relates to you and your candidacy, is that a lot of people in Greenwich have other things they can do. It was, I think it was February, there was a rally at Town Hall, and there were a couple of hundred people, and I think it was like 29 degrees with a nice breeze at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so there were a number of people there, and obviously... At the turn of a dime, we had, what, something like 200, 250 people at your uh, rally uh, and press conference about the school board, uh, about the assistant principal indoctrinating kids. So to me, this is a sign that things are actually different and a sign that even a Republican candidate can win in Connecticut because too many people have been adversely affected by basically the boot of government. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, I tend to have some libertarian leanings because my philosophy of government is that government should keep us safe, fix the potholes and get out of our way. <laughs> and a lot of people want the government to get out of their way, get out of their private lives, you know, the way they raise their children and, and the way our children are educated. They, they want to return to a, the time when our children were taught American exceptionalism and the, how much good our country has done for the world. You know, no nation has done for more to advance the human condition than the United States. And no people has done more to promote human progress than the citizens of our great nation. And that is a quote from President Trump. And he was correct. That, that is the absolute truth. And they are not teaching that in, in our schools today. They should, we should go back to it. Um, and that is what I would, that's what I support. That's great. So how can people help? And is there anything that we have not covered that you would like to mention? 
Well, certainly there's a lot on foreign policy we could mention and, and on China, on, um, you know, the, the COVID emergency still in, for, for in a force in Connecticut, which is ridiculous. But, you know, we've covered the most important issues that are on people's minds. If people would like to know more about me or if they would be so kind as to be willing to support my campaign, my website is leora4ct.com. It's L-E-O-R-A-F-O-R-C-T.com. And I would really appreciate any support they could offer to me because Blumenthal has a a big head start. He has $8 million or more in his coffers and I, I need to raise a lot more to compete. Yep. Well, but this we, we, is a winnable race. This is the first yeah. opportunity we have had to win this seat in a very long time. And I predict that Connecticut will be part of the red wave that is sweeping our country. Yes, absolutely. Well, Leora Levy, thank you so much for joining us today. Leora Levy, Republican Senate candidate in Connecticut. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. I, I really enjoyed it and would be delighted to come back anytime. Anytime. <laughs> Folks, thanks for checking out Reigniting Liberty. And remember, everyone has a role to play. What are you doing for liberty? Until next time. There you go.